What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, I know it's been a little while. Hope you're all doing well, you're safe and you're healthy. In case you don't know me, my name is Tyler. Uh, I'm just a normal guy, no law enforcement, no military experience of any sort. I'm just a dude who cares a lot about gear and self-defense and that kind of thing. Today, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about concealed carry and how to effectively conceal your firearm and I guess anything else that you're carrying on your person. In case you're watching this video like you just started carrying a gun, I do wanna reassure you that uh, if you're worried at all that people are going to be looking at you, looking for your gun, that's not the case. Most people don't care enough about you or anybody else around them that they're actually looking at you that hard. Um, and even if they did, even if they were watching really closely, most people, if they see what looks like the outline of a gun, they're probably going to think that you are like carrying one of these phone clip thingies on your waist. Maybe you're you know, 50 years old and you're a dad and you need this. Um, but yeah, most people's first thought is not that you're carrying a gun. But all that said, I do think concealing and being able to effectively conceal, uh, it does matter. But the first thing I want you to think about is choosing the right gun. Um, how large of a gun or which gun you choose to carry depends a lot on what you can actually effectively conceal, um, which obviously depends how big of a person you are and what sort of shape you're in. Uh, like for me, I generally am carrying a CZ P10C with a full-size weapon mounted light, um, but my girlfriend, she's like five feet tall, 120-ish pounds. And for her, there's been a time when she tried to carry this Springfield XDS. Just for perspective, these are very different gun sizes. Like this is a four point something inch barrel with the full size light. This is a four inch barrel as well, but they do make a shorter version. But I mean, if you look at the overall length, and especially if you look at the thickness of these guns, as well as the height of the grip, this is a much, much smaller gun. Um, this is like, it's tiny to me. It's like the size of my hand maybe. But on her, if she tried to holster this and conceal it, it looks ridiculous. Like you can absolutely tell that she's carrying a big old thing on her waist, um, so she doesn't carry this. Whereas for me, if I carry this gun, I don't think anybody would ever know, anybody would even ever have a, an inkling of an idea that I'm carrying a gun. But I'm also a big proponent of the idea that you should carry whichever gun you are most proficient with. So for me, if I'm shooting a bunch of different guns at the, at the range in the same day, I know for sure I'm a little bit slower uh, and a little bit less consistent with a subcompact single stack than I am with a full size, effectively, a full size double stack gun. Not only that, but this does carry 15 plus one of the gun, and then I can carry um, 18 round spare mags as well. So for me, this is the system that I choose to carry because I can conceal it, but if I were much, much smaller, I probably wouldn't even be considering this. Something else to consider is that if you are carrying inside the waistband, which I'm assuming most of you probably will, uh, the dimension that matters the most is going to be the uh, length or the height of your gun from the bottom of your magazine to the top of your sights, or in this case, the top of the optic. That length is gonna be the one that is, like all of this area is what's sticking up above your waistline. Uh, is what you're, what you're basically going to struggle to conceal. So that thickness there, how wide that is, and this length here matters a whole lot. And that's why, you know, generally speaking, a shorter gun, much shorter this way, and a slimmer gun, that's gonna be easier to conceal. If you can find something like this, that might be your starting place. Length, overall length matters a whole lot less. That is why guns like this, the four inch XDS and the P365XL, the guns with the longer slides and the shorter grips have become sort of popular, is because most people carrying inside the waistband can conceal full length, no problem. Hell, a lot of guys even carry, you know, X300, which comes out to like here uh, on their Glock 19. So like the effective length is the same as a Glock 34 or a five inch gun. But it doesn't matter because all of, all of this is inside your pants. Nobody's ever gonna see that anyway. What you're worried about again is this section right here. The next consideration is gonna be getting yourself a good holster. Highly recommend that you make your own. Learn how to do it and do it really well. Um, I'm kind of joking, but in all seriousness, if you, uh, Commit yourself to that and you dedicate a lot of time to it, you get good. I do think that's the best option. If not, check out like T-Rex Arms, Last Island Defense, Tier 1 Concealed. They all make great products. Uh, there's a bunch of holster companies out there, but you can expect to pay probably upwards of $150 for a setup like this that's going to have a space for your gun and maybe a spare mag as well. Um, if you are going uh, to look for a holster, a couple of things, a couple of mods to look out for. Um, one is going to be some sort of cloth, so they have this Raven Concealment. They also have the smaller cloths that kind of come straight up, or some of them, like uh, Last Island Defense, they have an integrated cloth kind of thing there. Uh, either way, though, you want something on this end of the gun to essentially what that's going to do is going to turn the gun in toward your body, turn the grip in toward your body so this doesn't stick out so far. 
Imagine how if I didn't have that claw there, that gun is going to kind of stick out this way. So essentially, battle holster. You can kind of see how if that kind of sticking out away from my body or it's kind of running parallel, you can see just how much that prints, especially with a white shirt. Uh, a lot of holster makers do plastic clips, which are fine, but they are quite a bit thicker. So if you look at these, I've got metal clips on mine. That's all of nothing, whereas a plastic clip is going to be like four times as thick as this. And those plastic clips, they do print under your shirt, so I want you to think about that. Even if your holster maker doesn't use metal clips, you can go ahead and get some yourself. I get these, by the way, at holstersmith.com. I'll put a link somewhere. I don't get any money from that, by the way, so just trust me. They're, they're a good choice. A little tab on the bottom in there that hooks onto the bottom of your belt, so you never have to worry about your clips coming off. And again, they do conceal really well. Uh, one more thing that I do, um, or if you're building your own holster that I would encourage is for you to space your metal clips. So down at the bottom here, you want these, this part of your clip to be very flush to the holster. Up at the top, you want a little bit of extra space. What that's gonna do is it's gonna encourage, you can imagine your belt being flush, right? It's gonna encourage your gun to tip back into your body a little bit. The last modification or the last piece here, which I think is probably the most important, is to have a wedge of some sort. You'll see on my holster, I actually leave extra Kydex. So I have this kind of like loop looking thing, I'll show you on the back. I have all this extra Kydex material that originally before I formed this, it came all the way down to like here, and then I fold it up and back. And basically I'm making a wedge shape on the back side. So on the, uh, the top, the slide section, um, I have a quite fat wedge right there. And then on the bottom section where my light is, it actually tapers down to be quite thin. So the idea, if you want a 360 of this, it's kind of hard to tell in video, but the idea is that that wedge in combination with the clip, in combination with my spacers here, it's going to tip the gun not only backward toward my body, but also inward like this. So the grip, again, the part that you're going to show to look and seal, this is basically tucked in to my body as far as it can be through the combination of the claw, the clips, and my wedge. Circling back, in case you're not making your own holster or assuming that you're not, tier one has kind of a wedge pack, like a foam wedge system that they use. I've not used that myself, but it's an interesting idea, kind of the same idea as this. I don't like that as much though, because it's obviously it's a piece of foam that you're essentially taping onto the back of your holster. Kind of seems like a cheap solution to me. Um, there's also, I think it's Raven Concealment, they do kind of a similar thing as well in rubber that you would have to bolt onto the back. Again, kind of a weird solution, but if you don't have any other choice, that's not a bad, uh, a bad thing to try. Last thing for the holster is if you are going to carry a spare mag at all, I strongly encourage that you carry it here. Um, the main reason is because you can imagine, I'm going to flag myself, it's an empty gun so I don't freak out. You can imagine if my torso, my belly is like right here and the gun is tipped this way as it would be. I have all this extra space in here anyway. All right, we'll do it this way, up close and personal. You can see if I had just the gun there and there was no spare mag, I have all this extra space. I'd have this huge gap here anyway. Might as well put something there. Another good reason to keep your spare mag as part of the holster inside your belt is because you always know that it's there. So I, I know they make things like the Neo Mag. I know they make like different separate, um, separate mag holders that you can clip into your belt as well. I don't like those as much, like they do allow you a little bit more freedom, but when you are going to grab that mag, if it's always on your holster in the same spot, it allows you to be a lot more consistent than if you have to like reach to your pocket or a different pocket on a different pair of pants, or if it somehow turned itself a little bit. You don't have to worry about any of that if that is integrated into your holster. Next thing on the list is getting yourself a good gun belt. I currently and have been for the past couple of years wearing a, have been wearing a Blue Alpha Gear hybrid EDC belt. This one has that Ostrialfin buckle, like a lot of them do, the kind of clicky type buckle. Um, 1.75 width here, 1.5 on this side, so it's smaller on this end, which is made so you can thread it through all your belt loops just fine without having to undo the belt. It's got that little Velcro closure so you can resize it as needed. Um, made out of nylon, and it's kind of floppy now after two years, but uh, it was quite a bit stiffer when I got it, and if you got a new one, I'm sure it would be quite stiff as well. But I don't mind having a little bit of flex. Uh, main points about this, one is um, if you do wear your buckle like this, or I guess any buckle for that matter, you probably want to offset that. So for me, I wear this buckle all the way off on the side, so it's like roughly here, which means that the part that is on the front of my body, where my holster clips are going to be, it's completely flat. Um, I'm doing that basically so that that buckle doesn't add extra width on top of my gun. So I mean, imagine 
how much more thickness I've just added by putting a buckle on top of that. Another thing to consider is possibly, I don't know if everybody wants to do this, but I wear my buckle inside out or wear my, my belt inside out. So normally you would buckle it this way uh, and doing so you'd have this real sharp edge at the back of the male end and that sharp edge is going to print. So instead, flip mine inside out and instead what we get is kind of a smooth edge with the nylon instead on both sides. So something to think about. I know that those ratchet type belts like Core makes ratchet type belts. There's a bunch of different brands nowadays. Um, those systems are really cool. They're very comfortable. They're really easy to adjust if you eat a bunch or if you, uh, I don't know, if you get skinnier one day. They're really easy to adjust, super comfortable, very reinforced. So they're not going to wear out over time like this might. But the one thing I don't like about those buckles, I have one. I don't have one with me. I'll put a picture up somewhere. But the buckle is really big. It's really big and it's really long. So it's harder to conceal. Um, I know they made a new version recently with a supposedly smaller buckle, so I might try one of those out in the future, um, but possibly something to look into uh, if you want to have a different option that's not something like this. No matter what you pick, just make sure that you have a gun belt that is sturdy enough that it's going to hold up the weight of your gun and that you can hopefully offset your buckle so that it doesn't print on top of your holster. The next thing to consider is your outfit. Uh, when you're going outside of your house, I mean when you're at home, do whatever you want. Honestly, when you're outside, do whatever you want as well. These are just suggestions, but you should probably avoid wearing things that are too tight or even slightly sheer. If you're wearing sheer clothing as a man, I'm not really sure if that's the best choice, so might want to check on that yourself. Um, but if you do wear something that's somewhat tight fitting, like I like my shirts to be a little snug, but I want them to be tight here in this area. I don't want them tight down here. Obviously, if it were tight, you'll be able to see the gun because it's going to pull the fabric in toward the gun itself. Um, now obviously, you know, if it's winter time where you're at or if it's just really cold for whatever reason, you're wearing like multiple layers, it's very, very easy to hide a gun. So I guess we wouldn't really have to worry about what you're wearing as much. Uh, another tip to consider is that lighter colors do make it easier to see the shadows if there are any shadows um, of the, the shirt getting stuck on your gun or whatever. So white is a harder color to conceal with. Black tends to be the easiest if that matters to you. Another thing worth mentioning here is that the drape of your shirt matters a lot. So when I say drape, I'm talking about how much like overhang you have. So if your chest comes out however far it does uh, and your shirt is not like really aggressively tapered, you're going to have some extra fabric down here. So all of this extra room from my, my stomach out to my chest, that might, might only be like an inch, maybe two inches, I don't know. But that's plenty of room now for my gun to hide in. So if I put something under my shirt, well, all the extra space for my gun to exist in without pushing out past the, uh, the farthest part of my chest. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, well, I'm not shaped like that, that's totally fine. Um, but something I want you to think about at the risk of me sounding like a huge dick, so please, I hope I don't get crucified for this, but I do think that being in good physical shape is a big deal. You don't have to devote your life to fitness by any means, but um, for a lot of you guys, and hopefully not you guys, but a lot of people I've seen on YouTube or Instagram or whatever, uh, talking about guns and gear and preparedness and so on, a lot of these guys ironically are in really poor shape and I get that everybody's life is different, everybody has different challenges and obstacles and everything, but if you're so prepared, like what happens if you can't run or what happens if you die an early death because you had heart disease or I don't know, diabetes or some other lifestyle related issue? Like what's that all for if you don't take good care of yourself? Even if you didn't care about your longevity or your health or whatever, which would be silly, even if you didn't care about that in the immediate future while you're trying to figure out how to conceal your stuff, at the very least, if you work out a little bit, keep yourself in decent shape, you'll have that drape, you'll have that extra room here to conceal your gun effectively. The more space you have there, generally speaking at least, you won't be backed into a corner of carrying something smaller than you'd like to. If you have enough room there, then hopefully you can size up to something like a compact or a full-size gun, maybe a spare mag as well. But basically, it just gives you more options where, of course, you can still carry a smaller gun in that amount of space and it'll conceal really well. But you could also possibly carry something bigger or even something bigger than that and still get away with it just fine. Next thing that kind of goes into this is when you buy pants, I know a lot of people initially will tell you like size up, go like one, two, three inches up in your waist size. I think one inch might be reasonable, but two or three is way too much. Um, even with, I'm not wearing the belt right now, but even with uh, just the pants as they are. These pants fit pretty close to my body. And if I were to put a holster in there, I have plenty of room. Like, I'm not stretching these out too much. I'm not sucking myself in or anything. You've got plenty of room in your pants unless you wear them really, really tight. 
Um, but you should have the room there. So I'd say at most size up one inch. If you do anything more than that, very likely what'll happen, in, and I've done this myself, this is why I'm saying that, you'll have a bunch of extra fabric that's gonna get bunched up around your holster here. It's just gonna be more stuff to possibly print underneath your shirt. Best option would be if you can find a store that has like changing rooms or fitting rooms so you can test out those pants with your holster. If you do that, do it very carefully. Um, otherwise, a lot of times you can just have stuff shipped to your house to order it online, have it shipped to you, try it on. A lot of companies nowadays offer free returns if it doesn't fit. Another way to think about the outfit thing is that you kind of want to blend in. Um, short story, uh, last week, a couple weeks ago, Christine and I were at the store, we were waiting in line and we look over to our left and there's this dude wearing uh, like a Glock t-shirt, cargo shorts, um, he has like some kind of like trail shoes on, he has this, uh, I don't know what you'd really call it, kind of like a man purse satchel type thing with patches all over it, he has a dedicated tourniquet holder on that, um, he's wearing like an America hat and Dude, like all due respect, wear whatever you want, but at the same time, me and Christine both, without saying anything, we look at each other, we're both like, oh, he's carrying a gun. Um, like we both knew. And that's fine, like you're not breaking the law, it's just uh, at that point, like what's the point of concealing it if you're advertising to the world that you may be carrying your gun? Uh, my point being, my long-winded point being just that if you can, you kind of want to dress in a way that is maybe more subdued. For me, shirts like this, I know this is not even that blatant, but shirts like this, like my cool gun stuff shirts, generally don't wear outside the house. I wear this at home when I'm making videos, uh, when I'm about to go to sleep, whatever. But generally speaking, I'll look more like this when I'm going outside. Um, I think that a more subdued or more neutral outfit can help you blend into most situations. So whether you are with your friends who wouldn't care anyway, or your family who wouldn't care anyway if they saw you were carrying a gun, or you were just out in the city, and if, especially right now in today's political and social climate, if you live in a city, you have to go through a city where you know, there might be protests or just people who are very aggravated about whatever, uh, it helps to dress in a way where you could blend into almost any crowd. Last consideration is gonna be slimming down your EDC. Like If you gather up all the things that you normally carry or that you consider carrying on your person, you should ask yourself a few questions. How often do you use this thing? And if ever you needed it, how urgent or how important would that need actually be? So for example, your gun, right? That's the one that we want to talk about most of the time anyway. Your gun, you're probably never going to use this. Um, I mean, we, we all hope that we never need to, right? But if you ever did need your gun, that would mean that you were in a pretty shitty situation. And if you didn't have it, it would be very high stakes. It would be very, very important. Um, so this is something that you probably don't compromise on. You carry this. I mean, if you're watching this video, if you carry it all or you're considering it, you probably should be carrying your gun all the time. This is not something worth skipping unless you're forced to because of the laws in whatever area you're going to. Um, another one that you might consider possibly skipping is the spare mag. I know I'm contradicting myself, but imagine, right? Spare mag, you could carry this. And if you carry a holster like this appendix in front of your body, you have the room for it already. But for those of you guys who are carrying spare mags like in your pocket or something on a Neo mag clip or just, you know, in one of your quote unquote mag pockets there, um, I do think that that sticks out a little bit, and especially with the Neo Mag, that's not very sneaky. Like, you can see the top of the mag, you can see the clip itself. So that might be one thing worth skipping just because it prints a whole lot or it's very visible. Another possible consideration there is that that is extra weight. That's going to take up most of one of your pockets. Uh, most of us don't want to put a mag on top of our phone. So maybe, maybe skip that. So I have this light. This is like a 2000 lumen Olight. Uh, M2R Warrior, like this light a lot, it's rechargeable, it's great light, but it's a little bit big, and even if I have one smaller, the thing that I always think to myself is I don't actually need this, because when I do use a light, it's for like administrative stuff, like did I drop something in my car, do I need to find that, maybe I'm coming home late at night and I want to be able to see like my, my lock on my door so I can get inside the house, but generally speaking it's not a super urgent need, and in that case, most of us carry a phone, right? If you carry a phone, you have a light on your phone, you can use that and it's gonna be just as good as that light you're carrying in your pocket for most things. One big caveat, I've heard people make this argument that uh, in most situations it's not legal for you to use your gun or your weapon mounted light to identify a threat. And that is true. Uh, in my case, I kind of feel like I have the light here that I could use if I needed to. If I feel like my life is in danger, I will draw my gun with the light on and do what I have to do. But that is a fair point. So if you are worried about that and the possibility of you 
being able to identify your threat before drawing your gun, maybe a handheld light is the way to go. Another one that you might consider skipping is a knife. So I don't actually carry this one, it just looks cool. But uh, I stopped carrying a knife quite a long time ago, at least on my person. If I have a backpack with me, which a lot of times I will, I'll have one in my bag, but I'm not gonna carry this on my person because again, I don't use this for anything really important. I use this like open boxes and that's about it. Um, I've never really needed the knife. And if I ever did need it, uh, like let's say I had to defend myself, if I have my gun, I have that. Uh, if I have a knife, I could use that, but I'm not skilled at knife fighting, so I don't think that it's the best choice for me. A couple of things you might consider adding to your EDC that you don't already have. One is a non-lethal option, so pepper spray, OC spray, mace, whatever you call it. Something like this, where you'd have access to like a less lethal amount of force, is very useful because really, again, none of us want to shoot somebody, at least I hope not, I hope we never have to. And having access to less lethal force is at least a good thing to have. And it doesn't take up that much space. It's not very heavy. Another one that I think a lot of people skip on, they probably shouldn't, is medical. So for me, at least, I carry a chest seal, hemostatic gauze, and a tourniquet at all times. This all sits in one pocket. So it occupies all of one of my pockets. But to me, at least, that's a worthwhile thing. Because again, that question in the beginning, how often do I use this? Never. How likely am I need to, to need it? Again, probably never, but the likelihood is a lot higher for this than it is for this, right? And if ever I needed the medical stuff, that need would be extremely urgent. So I wanna make sure I have this in case I ever did need it. The last consideration about having all the stuff is, and this is a really small consideration, but packing your front pocket. So my front pocket, I'm gonna have my medical. In my other pocket, I don't have it with me right now, but I'd have my wallet and probably OC spray, maybe chapstick in there as well. So there'd be a little bit more space here. But the idea is that by having a little more stuff on top of the front of your legs here, it does even out the space right here where your gun would be. So it makes this whole front section a little bit more flat, if you know what I'm saying. Otherwise, if you just have the gun here, there is gonna be kind of a bulge in your pants where you don't really wanna have a bullet all the time. So looking at all the stuff that you possibly carry you know, go through that, audit it, see if you actually need those things. And the next question, a really important one for you to ask yourself is, will all this stuff actually fit in my pockets without me looking ridiculous? And looking ridiculous is like, it's an easy compromise to make. But seriously, like if you are trying to carry your gun, a backup gun, three spare mags, your phone, your wallet, your keys, uh, your chapstick, a knife, a flashlight, pepper spray, medical, uh, there's just not gonna be enough room. So figure out what you need figure out how important those needs are and decide what you carry from there. All right guys, that's about it for this video. I'm sure I've missed a lot of things or there are some things that I just don't know about that you might. So if you have any tips that you'd like to share with me or the rest of the YouTube world, feel free to drop me a comment down below. If you have ideas for future videos, let me know. I believe my next video um, that I'm already working on is gonna be uh, my favorite drills to do with limited ammo because I know all of us, most of us, don't have a bunch of ammo that we wanna be shooting up right now. So. That'll be the next one. If you have any other ideas you'd like to see, let me know. For now, if you enjoyed this video, consider giving me a like, possibly subscribing, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.